We are live. Hey guys, this is Ruben Dua from Dub's podcast Connection Loop, and we're doing something a little bit new today. We're actually broadcasting this podcast directly to Clubhouse. So I think this might be the first time that I've seen this. I don't know if this has been done before. Um, the way that we're configuring this is, is pretty humorous. I'll get into that later, but it seems like it's working because um, we've got some folks that are kind of popping in the room here. So um, I have with me Brenda Meller, and Brenda's had a great success story in LinkedIn and on LinkedIn, in fact. And I think a lot of this is through creating original content, creating connections, and probably a whole lot of consistency. So Brenda, if you could please introduce yourself and let's get into this. Yeah. So thank you so much for having me, Ruben. And this is my first time in Clubhouse. Um, we were kind of joking before the show. I've had a couple people invite me and I've kind of resisted kicking and screaming because it's like one more thing to do. But I, I hear there's a there's a whole party that's happening over there. So delighted to, to be joining you. So I'm an independent marketing consultant. I don't work for LinkedIn or Microsoft. I work for myself. My company is Meller Marketing and I help people unlock the power of LinkedIn. Hmm. And what would you say uh, the, the best, let's just get right into it. I mean, what, what, are, what are the best, what are the golden tips that people need to be doing on their LinkedIn accounts? What's, what are they doing right and what should they be doing? Yeah, great question. I think the biggest mistake I see people making is they're not active on LinkedIn at all. And that means they, they probably set up an account once upon a time because there was a need they had. It might have been career related. It might have been business related. It might have just been because everyone said they should have a LinkedIn account and then they didn't do anything with it. And I think a lot of people in the beginning thought of LinkedIn as a job search site. So if I'm not looking for a job, I don't need to be using LinkedIn. And if you feel like you've you've missed the boat on getting active on LinkedIn, the longer you wait, I think the more intimidating it becomes. So they kind of get frozen, they do nothing. And I think that's the biggest mistake. So for anybody listening right now, like go on LinkedIn right now, like literally pull up the LinkedIn app or open it up in another window and go and post on LinkedIn and tell people you are listening to this live interview and tag Ruben and tag me in the post and just tell people something, you know, tell people what you're learning, tell people why you're participating in this discussion and just, you know, jump into the deep end of the water, so to speak, and just get active on the platform. I love that advice. I mean, it's all about taking action. I mean, one of the things that I'm so guilty of is not getting consistent with my LinkedIn posting. Mm -hmm. And anytime that I've dropped off, I've noticed that my engagement has dropped off, right? Yeah. My where I where I kind of live my comfort zone lives within me posting about 30% of my own content and then kind of delegating the posting of other stuff to to someone on my team. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason why I found comfort in that is because I find myself rewriting a lot of the captions a lot and then spending too much time on video editing video production you know making the video perfect and i know that that is not going to get me anywhere because a lot <laughs> of those things are just subjective and yeah. the other thing that i have to admit is that i'm a gearhead i'm a tech tech lover right so mm -hmm. i'm always searching for the new app and i'm always figuring out ways to add captions and messing around with square videos or 916 videos and i know that a lot of that stuff is just me having fun and not really necessarily optimizing um, you know, my content. So I love that advice. What I've started to do is 7 a.m., set the timer, get in, I meet someone on my team, and we just recreate content. I use it, maybe I create content for three days, maybe I create it for one day, but I just go all in for that hour and I try to get as much content as I can across channels. Um, give us, yeah, give us some tips on how we can get into that consistency. So I'm gonna actually use what you just told me and I'm gonna give you some suggestions. So rather than do all the behind the scenes stuff where you're learning from it, why not broadcast and tell people? Tell people, why did you use a square video? Why did you use a portrait video? Mm -hmm. You know, why did you edit something in? You know, what's the importance of captions and why should you use them and what should you do after you put captions in, you know, making sure they're burned in on your YouTube video. So what I like to think about is when I'm posting on LinkedIn, you want to be sharing content with your ideal target audience. And if you're looking to sell video services, give people free video tips, you know, tell them about your processes that you're going through. For me, that was one of the things I really figured out about the platform is I don't want to be trying too hard to sell myself. I really want to be almost speaking to like a one-to-one -one individual, like a prospective client, like what tips and advice would I give them? I'm thinking of like one person when I'm doing a post, I'm not thinking of reaching the world. So, you know, if you can share, I mean, I know what you're doing with video editing, there's probably a lot of great little snippets in there and learnings and insights and nuggets that you could be sharing with us. And there's so much great content in there, you know, versus going to the heavy level of production 
why not bring us behind the scenes with you so that we can learn from you and you position yourself as a subject matter expert by doing it and then we learn from you as well. You know, it's, it's such a great way to take my learnings and my reasoning for certain things and just turn that into content. I yep. think one of the other things that I always struggle with is this idea of what is the problem that video is solving and then yeah. how to leverage video to solve that problem. And I feel like these are completely different, disparate schools of thought. A lot of people whom we sell to, they don't even need to know that it's video that's the solution. They just want to get the results. I want to get right. more email opens, more responses, more engagement. And then the video is just that that's the the, the deliverable, right? Right. The, um, me whereas, the method delivery, right? Yeah, you know, and mm -hmm. we're on the other side, it, it's it's folks that are already in that are creating content that are just trying to figure out ways to optimize. So I kind of struggle between these two schools of thought and I'm trying to figure out a way to integrate them or maybe just diversify them. I don't know if it uh, if it means that I schedule things accordingly or if I go stream of consciousness. You know, how do we manage multiple sort of content topics in our calendars? Yeah, I I mean, I'm not a content. I, I, I run content calendars for clients and I used to do social media management. I don't do that anymore now, but I'm very familiar with the concept and I understand it's, it's having a strategy in place and making sure there's key messages that are in there. You're speaking to different audiences. You're, you're doing a variety of different content types and you have call to action. I kind of feel like once you you know how to do that, you've graduated from, you know, many of us at least have graduated from using a content calendar because we know what the rules are for posting. So in, in terms of your question, you know, what do you do and what works best? I, I think you test it you, and, and don't overthink things, you know, just go out and test them. And, you know, one day it's a video message and the next day it's just a static text message. Um, the next day, maybe it's an inspirational quote. So vary up your content. I, I think people enjoy seeing different types of content coming from people and it allows you to test and then you might figure out videos with captions work best, you know, in, in terms of format, but they only work good on a Friday, you know, maybe text messages work better on a Monday type of thing. Mm. Now you're on your way to acquiring um, 60K followers on LinkedIn. I don't like to talk about numbers too much because it is a vanity metric. I'd like to more talk about engagement. Um, mm -hmm. In your experience, what has driven the most engagement? And let's define engagement as likes, as comments, as shares. Um, what has driven the most engagement for your posts? Do you like yeah. to use text? Do you like to use video? Do you like to use images, some combination? Mm -hmm. um, surveys, you know, the emoji response, uh, posts. Give us your take on this. So it's actually something entirely different for me. What really changed the game for me on LinkedIn is I stopped talking about myself and I started talking about other people. Mm. So I would give shout outs, you know, and John Asperian is, is one of the people who inspired me every Friday for a while. I was doing a Friday shout. I was one of his Friday shouts. So he pushed me on, on a Friday and tagged me and told, told people about me. And I got a bunch of new connections and followers and stuff from that. And I'm like, wow, this is a great technique. Um, and I know John got some visibility from from doing that. So I started doing that and talking about people every Friday. And then over time, I started just using that same technique. And if I was attending an event, I would talk about the event planner and I would tell people what I learned at the event. Um, if I had a conversation with someone, I, you know, I'd ask permission. I might say, Ruman, is it okay if I talk about you on LinkedIn and what we talked about? And, and then I would post and talk about that person. Um, so really moving from talking about myself to talking about other people and using a blend of people, some were people that I knew, some were people who were kind of at this almost influencer level, you know, where they had a lot of followers and um, they had a large following uh, on LinkedIn. Um, I just tried different techniques and, and one was actually something, it wasn't even planned. I, I created this thing, Ruben, called the LinkedIn, Miller Marketing LinkedIn Rockstar List. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, if you've been following that at all. I'm all ears. Okay. <laughs> so I created it once upon a time as a list of people who did similar things in terms of, of LinkedIn. I was trying to learn from people who were better than me, who were more well-established, who'd been doing this a lot longer than I did. And I knew there was going to be a long learning curve. So I figured why not see what they were doing and figure out how to learn from them. So it originally started as an Excel spreadsheet where I put their names or LinkedIn profiles in there. And then I wanted to start to rank people, but I knew that there was people that had 5 million followers versus 15,000 followers. 
And I wanted to kind of see how I ranked against them, but I knew I couldn't compete with the 5 million follower people. So I started ranking people based on percentage growth week over week, and then I could kind of level the playing field and I could see how fast I was growing comparing to, to other people. And I did this for, for a while, probably six months on my own. And then one day I decided to publish it on LinkedIn. And I was kind of inspired again by, by John and Spirin, who was doing some similar things. And I published it and I tagged all the people I was tracking and they were like, wow, this is amazing data. And um, they like, and it was, again, it was shining the spotlight on other people. I, you know, I had a selfish reason for doing it. I wanted to learn and grow, but I also wanted to associate myself with other people who are, who are doing similar services. So mm. for me, I mean, if you want to grow followers um, on LinkedIn, I mean, it's, it's not a platform where you can just take from it. You have to give. I'm a big believer in the whole concept of social media karma. The more you pay it forward, the more attention that you pay to others on the platform, the more that will come back to you. Well, I think that you say that so well. And I think the, the problem that a lot of people suffer from is that if they are in a crunch and if they have to accomplish a goal, yeah. that it's really hard to pay it forward. It's really hard to say, I'm going to create a content calendar. I'm going to post on LinkedIn, you know, right. four times a week. It's really hard to do that because they've got some number that they have to hit. You know, they have to sell this much and they have to accomplish this much. And mm -hmm. at that point, content creation becomes potentially a distraction. Um, that's an unfortunate place to be in. That's, you know, what I might call being socially upside down where you find yourself in a, in a desperate situation where you actually don't have the, may I call it a luxury, um, to, to actually create content and to put yourself out there, which is basically networking. Mm -hmm. And if we don't network, then we don't build our net worth. So uh, this is something I think about. How can you, what is the advice that you have to people that are in a little bit of a crunch that, that can't get into that calm, cool, chill place of going through the motions of creating content? How can they do it in a crunch? You know, I think about what what's on your mind today, what's happening in your business today, what's happening in the industry, what's happening in the world as it relates to the work that you're doing. And it's almost like, you know, back in the pre-COVID days when we would talk around, you know, the, the in the coffee room at work, what are we talking about there? Um, using conversational things, you know, using your everyday what's happening in your business, what's happening in your life, what's happening in your head. You know, like this morning I got up and I was kind of feeling like, I know beginning of the year, there's certain people when you work in corporate, especially you're just not feeling the love from your manager, from your team. You know, you're not feeling respected. You're not feeling appreciated. And I posted and I just, I was kind of talking about the, um, you know, convenience stores. When you go in, there's the take a penny, leave a penny jar thing. And I, and I said, so here's like a take a penny, leave a penny type of a post. If you need inspiration, here are some things you can pick one and say it out loud, pretend I'm saying it to you and things like, um, I appreciate you working for me. That was a great idea on the product. I just put up not a nice little inspirational, positive quotes. And I said, if you have inspiration, you'd like to leave on this post, leave it for other people. So it was just something I was thinking about this morning. I put out on there. I didn't overthink it. Uh, I think a lot of people get frozen, especially if you haven't done postings in a long time. Like, what do I want? What should I be posting on LinkedIn? What's the message it sends to people? Don't overthink it. You know, just try to get out of your own head and just think about what's your mood? What's your mindset? You know, where are you at today? And then how can you come up with a post that might reach other people feeling the same way? You know, whether it's starting the new year, setting resolutions, not setting resolutions, you know, wherever your mindset is, there's probably other people on, on the platform that are thinking similarly. So use that as content for your post. OK, so so let's talk about getting to the first like 10,000 followers. Could you yeah. could you I know it's different for everyone. Right. But mm -hmm. could you kind of map out a strategy for us? Um, I want I want to know about how we develop a content calendar, how we do a others first strategy, how we include yeah. other people's sort of a piggyback strategy. Um, mm -hmm. What is the most what's the most tactical advice that you can give us? So let me start with the growing followers. I mean, for me, it was never like a goal to get to 50,000. It was just more I wanted to focus on improving what I was doing on LinkedIn. And, and what I do for a living is helping people with LinkedIn strategy. So how can I be better and better at what I'm doing to help other people? And my background is I'm a, I'm a marketer. So I'm always thinking about Who's my, who's your target audience? Who, you know, what are your business goals and how can we use social media to help to, to reach those audiences and achieve those goals? And then you have to kind of also take into consideration the platform. There's a psychology of how people are using it and what people respond to and what they don't respond to. 
so for me, I kind of figured out what worked for me and, and what messages work for me and don't work for me. And then I started applying that into my practices on LinkedIn. But I think if you want to be effective, if you want to grow your followers on LinkedIn, you have to be posting on a regular basis. You know, at minimum, you should be posting once a week, ideally once every single business day. And then look and see your analytics after the fact, um, especially reactions and, and comments. And look and see who those people are. If you're not connected with them and they are a good fit for you, then reach out and invite them to connect. And don't say, I, Ruben, I saw you, you commented on my post because that's almost kind of creepy and stalkerish, right? But instead, look at their profile and, and don't use automation at all. I never use automation. Use, you know, use what you see on their profile as reference in the invitation. So it might be, hi, Ruben, we haven't met yet, but I see that we're both involved with doing podcasts. Let's connect on LinkedIn, Brenda Meller. Now that message is going to reach you, Ruben, and you're going to know that it's a legit person trying to reach out. It's not like a bot who's automated and using messages out to you. So that's kind of key. It's like the one-to-one, -one, the human-to-human -human contact on there. When you're posting regularly, you can start to look at your post data, which posts are getting a lot of impressions, likes, and comments. Okay, do more of those. And the ones that aren't, try to figure out what's the difference between them. Was it more of a selling message versus an inspirational message? Were you talking about people in one versus talking about yourself in the other? So you can start to kind of train your brain on what works and what doesn't work on the platform. Now, if you're really trying to focus on growing followers on LinkedIn, there is a way that you can start to really accelerate growth. And I wouldn't do this until you get to maybe five or 6,000 um, connections or rather followers or connections on LinkedIn. You can change your default button from connect to follow. And right now, if anybody's watching this show, if they go on LinkedIn.com, search for Brenda Meller, M-E-L-L-E-R. If you go to my profile and we're not yet connected, my default button is follow. So you don't have to wait for me to accept it if you click on follow. If you click on follow, you're instantly a follower of mine. Versus an invitation, I don't know about you, about Rune, but I've got like probably 100 or so invitations that are pending right now. I have to take time, go through and figure out who I want to connect and who I don't. Followers, they just automatically follow you and that way they can see your updates. So if you're looking to grow your followers, you know, you're trying to get to that first 10,000, wait until you get to five or 6,000, but then maybe change your default button to follow and that's a way to accelerate it. There and were then, two other questions you asked, and I'm, I'm blanking on those right now. <laughs> well, I mean, since you mentioned that, tell us what, what is the different, what is the true value of a follower versus a connection on LinkedIn? I mean, I understand that there's a 30K threshold on that, but just yeah. break that down for us. So at first, out, for, for those listeners that are watching right now or, or listening to this right now, what you're referring to is you can only have 30,000 connections on LinkedIn only. That's not a small number. It's a pretty big number, but you can only connect with LinkedIn with 30,000 people on LinkedIn. So that means one of you sends an invitation, the other person has to accept it. When you become a connection, you now have the ability to message each other back and forth unlimited and not just the ability, but permission. Somebody has initiated that process and somebody has accepted it. So you've built up a little bit of trust within that. You also have the ability to see their contact information. If they've chosen to show their email, you can you know, get their email address from that. And then you also have the ability to see their posts in your homepage feed. So if you connect with someone, you're automatically following them, okay? Versus a follower, you you don't have the ability to see their contact info. You can't message them. You know, you can use the in-mails, but you can't message them one-to-one -one, um, outside of that. But you will still see their updates in your homepage feed. So let's say I'm trying to do business with someone on LinkedIn. Um, I send them an invitation, but I know everybody else is sending them an invitation. They're never going to reply back to it. If I follow them, I will see their updates in my homepage feed and I can start to engage when they post. I can comment, I can like, I can reshare if I want. And I might start to become more of a familiar name. Oh, there's that Brenda Meller commenting on my post again. And that way, when I reach out to that person in the future, I've already built up some familiarity with my name and I've shown that I'm friendly. I'm, I've shown like some professional restraint. I wasn't like that salesperson that was pitching them right away in the invite. And then when I reach out, I might say, hi, Jabber, we haven't met yet, but uh, you may recall I commented on your post last week about marketing during the pandemic. I, I thought you had great insights there. Let's connect on LinkedIn. And of course, Deborah's going to go, oh, yeah, Brenda, wow, she was really thoughtful in her response. And she might be more receptive to me at that point. So I think about, you know, depending on what your business goals are, it may make sense to connect with someone. But if you 
aren't able to connect with them, when you follow them, you can still see the, the updates in your homepage feed. Very cool. I, I like, I really like how you kind of map that out. Now, what would you say for folks that are really trying to prospect? Like if they have a, a hit mm -hmm. list of a hundred, hundred folks, hundred decision makers, let's just yeah. say, um, how do you think we should go through that sequence? How do we get their attention? Yeah, great question. So before you even send out the invitations or search for those people on LinkedIn, the very first thing you want to do is optimize your LinkedIn profile. And if you don't know what that means, your profile's not optimized. And, and it's something you can do yourself. Just think about your ideal target audience. You know, put yourself in the mindset of that's that's who's looking at your profile and look through your profile from top to bottom. Does every section make sense to you as your intended target audience? So the biggest mistake I see people making is their LinkedIn profile looks like a resume. It looks like you're trying to find a job, especially when I go into the about statement and you talk about how you're a self-starter and a team oriented and you generate revenue for the company and blah, blah, blah. If I'm looking to buy from you, I don't care about any of that. You know, I'm really looking for what's your company about? How can your products and services help me to reach my business goals? And then when you go to your experience section, take out the stuff that you would put in a resume and really just focus on a high level description of your company, description of a role, and maybe your contact information. So think about everything in your profile from top to bottom. How does it speak to your ideal target audience? Do you have multiple calls to action throughout your profile? What that means is your contact information shouldn't just be in your contact info section. It should be in your about statement. It should be in your experience section. You know, making sure that you're kind of weaving that throughout to make it super easy. I kind of like to think of it like um, silver platter marketing. You know, I'm kind of like serving it up on a silver platter to make it super easy for you to do business with me. So after you've got your profile optimized, everything's in place, you've got good branding elements on there. Then when you start to invite people to connect with you, don't use automated services. There's no quick way of, of doing these things. I think it's all about genuine human engagement. If you use any of the automation tools that are out there, eventually you will get caught by LinkedIn. They're getting smarter and smarter at that. And we can tell, you know, even if you're using automation and it's working, we can tell. And, and there's people that won't accept those automated invitations, myself included. Um, so use a personal note. And when you don't say you don't out. accept them, that means you just you can just sniff them out and you just you, you can I mean you can tell. I mean what I started doing, Ruben, is just because I'm seeing a huge increase right now and I'm trying to stay true to my brand. I like to be positive, inspirational, forward thinking. I don't like to be snide or catty or, or that type of thing. But usually now when I'm getting an audit what looks like an automated invitation, I will reply back and all I say is test. That's all I say, test, T E S T, the word test. And probably nine times out of ten, they don't respond. So I know it's automation. Um, occasionally I'll get a response back and the person will say, what do you mean by test? Well, now I've got them talking. So then I can explain, I use this technique to screen out automation and bots. Are you a real person? And they'll reply back and say, yeah. And then I can use this as a way of saying, um, you know, I focus on LinkedIn strategy and it's just, I'm, I'm trying to understand, um, and screen people in that are real people looking for real connections on the platform. I've got I've got you talking. That's the key at this point. I've breaking I'm breaking down that barrier that a lot of us have between one person and another by getting you talking. Um, and sometimes I get the bots that respond back. I'll say test, and they'll reply back. And it's kind of funny. They'll say having a great day here as well. You know, hey, did you want to check out our white paper and blah, 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 and some other information? And I'll reply back and then I'll say test one, two, three. And I've got a few of these going back and forth right now with like four and five messages. And then finally a person comes in usually after the third or fourth message and they'll say, what did you mean by test? And then I've got a real person talking. So, you know, it's- So are, is that them just like completely playing dumb at that point? <laughs> no, I mean, at that point, I wouldn't even respond back. If I saw somebody doing, and, and I'm not trying to play with you, but I'm, you know, I'm really trying to understand at what point these things are going to drop off. Um, and I got, if you're if you're selling, you know, I, I just think there's a better way. And I think the, the first step is, the goal is to get them to accept the invitation. You're going to have a higher likelihood of them accepting the invitation if you are using something that is authentic and if you're making the invitation all about them. So that means looking at their profile, finding one or two things that you have in common or one or two things that are interesting to you and comment on that. Maybe you attended the same college or university. Maybe you share common connections and you might want to name drop them. Maybe you saw a recent post and that's why you reach out. But use that in your invitation. So if you're using LinkedIn to sell to prospect, Step one is to make the invitation all about them. Step two is a soft sales pitch. So when they reply back, you say, thanks, John, for accepting my invitation. And then maybe it's a, it's a one-liner or a sales pitch or something, something like, 
I help people unlock the power of LinkedIn. Let me know if you'd ever like to learn more. That's it. And I don't push a website. I don't push a calendar link. I don't do anything more at that point unless the person says, actually, I do have a question. Then we kind of chat back and forth. And then I might say, would you be interested in hearing more about my services? So I'm not a salesperson. I'm a marketer. Um, I found this approach works really well because of human behavior. Nobody wants to be sold to. But if we can build up a relationship, if we can get dialogue going back and forth, if you have that trust, they may be more open to continuing that dialogue. Mm, such good advice here. Such good advice. Where, where can we learn more about you? How do we connect with you on LinkedIn, website, socials? Yeah, great. So um, mellermarketing.com, M-E-L-L-E-R, mellermarketing.com is my website. Uh, if you go on LinkedIn, you can visit my profile. If you want to connect with me, there actually is a way. I, I have over 50,000 followers, but I'm actually a little over 16,000 connections. So I'm, I'm more selective at this point because I really want to focus on the last 15,000 being people that are a good fit for my network. If you go to the more button, on my profile. So there's like the follow button, there's something else in the middle, and then there's the more button. If you click on the more button, there's a little drop down underneath that. And if you click on personalized invite or connect there, mention that you heard me on this broadcast, mention something specific. So I know you actually were a real human being watching the broadcast, and I'd be happy to accept your invitation. Nice. Well, thank you so much for joining me here. And this is our first broadcast to Clubhouse in addition to our regular social platforms. Brenda, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, it was a blast. Thank you so much, Ruben. Thanks.